All right, black, white, calyx. So um, this started off as a build around submission for this Planeswalker in standard. And I felt like this card really makes for a good control Planeswalker. And there aren't good control cards inside of just straight green, white. So the thing I took to building was a black, white shell with Banishing Light, Oath of Kaya, and Elspeth Conqueror's Death as additional removal spells that Calyx's plus one could find. So this is a black-white deck with a small green splash for Calyx. We've also got a couple of Destiny Spinners on the sideboard to help the Flash matchup, but largely just straight black-white. The ways we actually win the game are Tiamat Calls the Dead, Archon of Sun's Grace, the Nightmare Shepherd beating people down. One question a lot of people have had about Nightmare Shepherd is... This card does feel a little bit strange in a deck that it has as low of a creature count as this one does, but I think this card is quite good in this deck just because a 4-4 flying creature, that's an enchantment we can find with Calyx is good, and our main creature that we do have, Archon of Sun's Grace, is a really good one to be able to keep into play because it puts a lot of pressure into play really quickly. So while we don't have a ton of creatures for Nightmare Shepherd, Shepherd does turn into a relatively quick clock on its own, and protecting Archons of Sun Grace. Sun's Grace is very, very good. Last time we played this deck, it felt very reasonable, but it was also one of the first decks we played in the format, so interested to see if this one still feels good or if it's one of the, you know, many decks that just, like, doesn't quite age well as the format matures more and more. Archon's kind of been impressive in general. We played a green-white enchantments deck yesterday on stream that had four Archon in it. It was very good there as well. Yes, yeah, it's fine. Sagas are kind of medium with Calyx's down tick. So, Sagas, you're right. Sagas are not good with Calyx's down tick. That's why you don't use Calyx's down tick on Sagas. Would, would, rec would recommend against doing the bad play. So, the other enchantment decks we've been playing have been more aggressive. And this deck's definitely on the more controlling end of the spectrum. All right. Turn one. Turn one, Scorch Spitter definitely means turn two. Turn two, Birth. Our hand here is actually quite reasonable against an aggressive deck with Othakai here as well. Yeah, we did actually have that come up where we, they had a... Uh, what's the word I'm searching for? They stole one of our creatures, so we Calyxed onto this so that way we could get it back afterwards. I feel like I'm just supposed to agonizing remorse here and play a tap land. Maybe that's wrong. Take two more in combat this turn, but I'm gonna get to gain two with birth next turn. Gonna go ahead and banishing light this harden in the forge, otherwise they get two one ones. Yep. Birth, birth gained a lot of life there. So we're going to take five on this attack. Hoping to draw an untapped land so we can cause the dead plus out the Kaya. So they have Ember Cleave, but we're at 15. This will make another zombie next turn. We'll get to play Nightmare Shepherd. Any any threat they draw, though, is very, very scary just because of Embercleave, which is unfortunate. So, like, I can trade my board for this Rimrock Knight here, but that's not super appealing, huh? 
If I don't trade my board for the Rimrock Knight, I die in two. Don't play a creature. Sick. Hoping to draw like a Calyx here at this point. Get some card advantage going. Now we really need to draw a Banishing Light to get rid of this. Well, you know, Swish. Something, something skill game. Actually, we just get rid of the Ember Cleave, right? They have second cleave here. My play is real bad, but they have second cleave because magic sucks. Are they just going to double castle? Sure, deal. Yeah. All right. So we have a shot. Uh, they didn't have cleave in play when I banished the creature, Break Baker. Did they? Maybe they did. I don't remember now. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I think you might be right. Now I now I don't remember. They didn't. Okay. I say if they did, I definitely made a mistake. Oh, the guy is flavor text is just so good. They can double pump here, trade tokens, and then Calyx goes to two. If they draw a shock, they're in a good they're in an okay spot. If they didn't draw a shock, and I get to sit here continuing to do this, like. If you have your end step, you get a 2-2 two -two zombie. Yeah. Okay. So in in route to stabilization here. This, this game's going to be over long before we minus seven. This makes zombies for calls the dead here too. Um, yeah, we're in for Conker's death. It's a good safety hit with this. Gives us a way to kill another Ember Cleave, which is the way they beat us here. Hey, thanks for the eight months, Anaphylactic. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. This is a relatively quick clock, right? Like this attacks for eight and then, or six, then we make another zombie. So they're dead in two currently. He did not, our large. We just like have cast all of our calls the dead this game and just like feels feels good to end against mono red at 20. Yes, match one, match one, game one with this deck.
your arm on a raid opponent should consider being a little bit luckier. No MTGA has constant frame rate, frame rate drop and lag. It's a feature. Dead weight and Massacre Girl definitely seem good. Um, D Spark tags Torbran and it tags Embercleave. I feel like Shepard's probably too slow. I probably don't want all the Conqueror's Death, although this is another out to Embercleave, which is nice. Yeah, they could have Frenzy. Both of these answer that. Um, Remorse is probably not what I'm in the market for here. Maybe I leave a third Conqueror's Death in. Let's give this a try. Hey, Lake Show 24. Thanks for shipping your prime this way again. Welcome back. Yeah, probably Water Boy. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. We had plenty of gas for everything all around. Vanko Rossick. Welcome to Hoaglandia. Thanks for shipping your Bezo Bucks this way this month. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend wherever you're at. Here's a sneaker keeper if I ever saw one. All of our colors. Two cheap pieces of interaction. Sign me up. Don't have untap black on one, but he said before he spiked it into the ground. We play Deadweight in this deck as opposed to Disfigure because Deadweight, um, wow, that's good. Wow, that's good. Uh, so do I do this on two or do I do this? I think I'm supposed to birth and get this going. That's sick though. So we play Deadweight instead of Disfigure because it exiles to things like this and we can find it with Calyx. Triggers. Triggers our Constellation card, etc. We played four of this card last time and four felt like too many, but the, the two that we have in here seems real reasonable. Huh? So do I just dead weight? I think I just dead weight the Rimrock Knight at this point, so that way they can't cleave me this turn. I'm just going to be resource efficient and play this. I am born of Nyx, child of the stars. Sweet. And then next turn I get to go. Two, three. The gifts of the gods. Perfect. Super rewarded for waiting to play this, huh? Oh, gosh. Are we done here? I think, I think we're done here. Clothis, show me my path. Clothis, show me my path. I mean, this is one of the decks I ended up putting up on my website. I'm glad it looks to be having a reasonable showing the second time through. I think this deck's super reasonable.
It just, it just isn't even fair. It just, it just isn't even fair. Yeah, I've also reached out to the deckmaster person before though, and like offered to pay them to do stuff and have updates. So I don't know. I pinged them on two different places. I'm waiting to hear back. If I don't hear back from them like midway next week, I'm gonna look into the details of forking the project. Are you allowed to fork something on stream? Asking the real questions. I am blessed by this. It's not, it's not open source, Jin, and it has a deck list plugin that doesn't integrate with my website, so that would be extra clutter on there. So I would have to install Windows to use that plugin, which would be a big disruption to my workflow and take me a lot of time. It would probably take me as long to set up Windows on my computer as it would for me to fork the other thing. So like, yeah, we are talking about how Deckmaster still isn't updated and how if I don't get a response back, like it literally, I'm pretty sure they literally just have to update a JSON file uh, Deckmaster, uh, you, there, it's, it's on GitHub. What is forking a program? Forking a program. So open Deckmaster is what's referred to as open source software. So it's software that has source code available for anyone to look at who wants to look at it. And forking an open source project is when you take the code base that someone else has provided and copy it and start maintaining, adding features and fixing bugs yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's true. In the long, in the long term, being in control of it is ideal. Like if I fork it and set my own thing up, I can literally just like have the cards updated for Deckmaster day one, which is probably ideal. Double Fay of Wishes. Um, do I just take a Fay of Wishes here? Yeah, I'm gonna take Bedevil. is a better viewer experience for the people here if Deckmaster's updated, so forking and maintaining it myself is probably ideal. In a in a perfect world, uh, the person who, hey, thanks, Stacko. In a perfect world, the person who is no longer, seems like they want to maintain it, will just give me access to maintain what they're doing so I don't have to have, like, a second Twitch extension uploaded so people will be confused because they'll have to, like, rebrand it as something else. Yeah, forking forking projects is something that happens happens all the time in the open source open source community. Many many very popular pieces of software are forks of other projects. All right, so with Nikki B in hand, um, I think I just calls the dead here because I don't want to like play shepherd and have Nick kill the shepherd. Do I care if I play shepherd and Nick kills the shepherd? I guess I don't actually, right? Yeah, and I mean, like, Ubuntu is technically a fork of Debian, right? Like, every every Ubuntu release is, like, a snapshot of Debian testing.
Yeah, Conqueror's Death can bring back the Nightmare Shepherd. That's very true. Good thought. Yeah, Fae of Wishes likely implies that they're, they're a Fire Stack. And they plus this, they just get to exile this 04 that doesn't really matter. Good clean Levin. If, if there's any nerds out there that understand whatever language Deckmaster is written in and want to maybe take a peek at it and try and help me figure out what it takes to set up the server back end. Because I, I fumbled through with the help of someone compiling it for the desktop client for Linux, but setting up the server back end is a whole different can of worms. Uh, I don't think I want that because they have ritual assert, right? Unless you name your fork Deck the Halls. Think I just trade here? If I wait a turn to trade, I get to scry to gain two. That's probably worth it. Yeah, elect the desktop client is written in Electron Vu. I know, I know that much. I think I Archon on top and calls the dead underneath. And then I can go ahead and Banishing Light, Ashiok, and then Oath kill their nightmare. Sounds good, Brandy. I think I hold this in case they have another Ashiok. Been watching a lot lately, but I've always been a fan. Appreciate how I can count on you and not play the same boring limited slash sealed. Well, thanks for keeping me around, Sarkazan. Those Twitch Prime support, those Twitch Prime subs are what keep me here as a job. I appreciate it. So now I'm gonna double block. I only didn't block double block last turn because I wanted to get the scry two. Although the top of my deck ended up being good, so it's like kind of whatever. Hey, milk steak! Thanks for the five months. Welcome back. All right, so I guess a question here is: Oh, I have a calyx in my bin already. Well, that's perfect. Hey, cricket! Thanks for the tip. Forking over money for forking. Thanks for being a pillar of the community. Thanks for the support. I think I take, I think I take calls the dead here because I can go seventh land Archon calls the dead. I want to err on the side of leaving planes in my deck, so that way if I draw another birth, I can have something to get with it. Yeah, the fact that Archon doesn't die to their Sweeper here is great. Big agree. That's actually pretty unfortunate. So I was kind of counting on that to stick around. Maybe I'm supposed to just play that out first rather than being aggressive. This isn't particularly safe in my hand, and they probably don't have sweepers that kill it, so let's play it out. Here. 
So they're down to just like one card plus these two, and I'm getting to kill their Ashiok in combat here, so feel like we're in an okay spot. I get to hold on to this to kill the Murderous Rider next turn. Super punished for my decision. I guess it's not too punishing because like this kills this at least, but yeah, the fact the fact that we lost our Calyx was a big deal. All right, so. The top of their deck was actually just the Stone Cold Nuts. Conquer's death. Conquer's death. Conquer's death. The Scry doesn't matter because they're going to exile the top two cards of our deck. Vomit. I mean, like... We had a point where we were both top decking and like they drew three running planeswalkers in a row and we drew three lands. You know how the game goes. We're on. Thank you for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hoglandia. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend wherever you're at in the world. Being luckier is a good line. I agree. It's a strong, it's a strong play. Duress sounds great. Birth sounds less great. Is D-Spark good? D-Spark might be okay here. Othakaya doesn't seem particularly stellar. I can finish off some of their Planeswalkers. Maybe I leave two in. I think that's the spot. I'm going to cut the Births and two Oaths for two D-Sparks, two Duress. Maybe I'm supposed to bring in Destiny Spinner because they could have more Counterspells post-board. Plaguecrafter, maybe good, maybe bad. Morning, Eugene. The problem with Plaguecrafter is like they have all of these adventure creatures which insulate them, which makes it less stellar. Plaguecrafter is largely in the sideboard for addressing Dream Trawler, which they don't have access to because they're playing Grixis. Punished for not leading on the Overgrown Tomb. Had to take two damage. Um, that one. Kind of surprised they left Ritualist in. I guess we have a couple of things that make tokens, so it makes sense. Let's just Calyx and start generating some card advantage here. They draw Counterspell. No, they just have Fable Passage. Meister Clickington. Thanks for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. I appreciate you keeping me around. Um, come in for Calls the Dead. Yeah, that's quite possible. Like, it's, we had a couple of different situations. I also could have prioritized getting the Calyx, my second Calyx, into play that last game a little bit sooner. That could have, could have likely been the better play. Instead of leaving it in my hand to get one for one by a discard spell. That's unfortunate. Nice temple. Another murderous rider, Reed. We have missed the question. Would brought back be good in the manor side for why why would it be good? Instead of me telling you your suggestion is bad, can you tell me why it's good? How does it how does it solve that what problem that we have in that matchup does it solve? And in what way does it solve it? it would be my question to you.
I think I'm gonna hang on to a land for now, just in case they... Just in case they Ashiok me. Gone fishing. We get to bring a Calyx back with the Conqueror's Death in two turns, hopefully. Next turn, assuming we draw a blank, will Banishing Light plus Call the Dead? And keeping fires out of play is probably a good thing. Well, in my in my defense, Houseboy, I'm I'm not really controversial among people who are likely to vote for Bernie Sanders, whereas like Joe Rogan is an alt-right enabler. So he's pretty controversial among people who would like to vote for Bernie Sanders. For the record, even if Rogan is largely a turd who does things I don't care for. I think his endorsement can only be good things. And receive the gifts of the gods. I mean, Rogan has an incredible amount of reach. Regar regardless of your personal feelings for Rogan, like, that's the truth. Like, that's, that's why it can be relevant. He casts a very large net. Strange chance. Keyses would be good in this deck to leverage all the self mill and a grindy ranch. We don't have that many legendary cards, so no. I think I just let this happen because I'd like to scry two, give myself the best chance to find another Conqueror's Death here. Yeah, I think that's true too. Who is, who is Rogan? Joe Rogan is an online media personality who does a lot of interviews on his podcast. And the problem with Joe Rogan is that he has an incredibly large audience and he gives a megaphone to basically anyone, including people that push some very dangerous ideas. And generally speaking, he doesn't fact check the people he doesn't fact check the people that are coming on his show and talking. He just gives them a platform through which to talk. Which can be problematic. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't call him alt-right, but he definitely when he invites people who are who are alt-right on his show, he enables them and he enables their platforms. Wonder what Calyx tastes like. It's probably not very good, huh? He doesn't look like he's got a lot of meat on his bones. He's pretty, pretty rock hard abs. Oh, don't play a land. <sighs> well, so we're back in the same spot we were last game, right? We're like, we were ahead because we had this Calyx in the tank and now like we no longer have the Calyx in the tank so we're no longer ahead. Okay. Don't have two good cards. Perfect. Kill your Narset hits you. They do have a scry land here but other than that we're doing okay. I, 
I agree, Quintoxic. I think pandering to people or trying to swing people who voted for Trump previously to vote for a Democrat is not the not the way you win in 2020. I think the way the Democrats win in 2020 is to have a record voter turnout. You need to have a progressive who's going to energize people who normally don't vote to get out and vote. That That is how you win in 2020. That, uh, it's a good draw. Now, do I... Do I play the, do I just play this out because it puts them on a two-turn clock and threatens to bring my Calyx back? I kind of think I do, huh? Is that is that too is that too aggressive? It's my last conqueror's death. Uh, if they draw Bolas, it's not too big of a deal, right? And they can't scry and cast Liliana here. So if they cast, if they draw Bolas, they can kill Archon, I kill Bolas, and then I'm not as far ahead as I was. The Sultai Vanifier deck is really good against ramp. And fun to play. Anything anything aggressive to the White Devotion aggro deck on my website is also a good choice. Things things that smork get under the get under the ramp decks. Swish. Alright. There was a game three. Hashtag, hashtag sometimes lucky. Yeah, I think I'm happy with how we boarded. Just gonna go ahead and run it back. Is hashtag making a comeback? No, I'm just like, I'm just really far out of touch with the children, so all of my memes are old. Yeah, see, Nifty gets it. Yeah, that sounds great. Hey, Demand in Black. Thanks for sending out your sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend wherever you're out in the world. I appreciate you keeping me around. Sure. Huh. Is it crazy to just take their drawn from dreams here? Because I have Conqueror's Death for the Ashiok, right? I think I just want to take their two for one. Would love another discard spell here. Calls the Dead also fine, just something to play on curve. Hopefully it finds something to make a zombie with. Fantastic. Oh, right. We had Othakai in there already to make a zombie with. Excellent. MWLX, thank you for the year and a half. Welcome back. They have wished it just been unreal slow for them. Especially, our deck's really good at taking fires out of play. Just made things extra good for us. Foolish <sighs> That's unfortunate.
All right, am I plussing Calyx this turn or not? Because if I'm plussing Calyx, I want to bottom this. I think I'm plussing Calyx. Yeah, I don't have anything else to do with him, really. All right, are we conquering death on the fires or the Ashiok? Probably the Ashiok, right? Wow, they didn't scry at their upkeep. I wonder if that was a mistake. Feel like they needed to scry there so they could try and hit their land for Chandra. Because, like, if they don't Chandra here, I get a bunch of looks for another Conqueror's Death or a Banishing Light for next turn. Yeah, they probably forgot the stop. I agree. All right. Hoping for Banishing Light or Conqueror's Death here. And my Conqueror's Death actually popped off the second chapter this turn, right? So currently, if they draw a red source, they still can't Chandra this turn because she currently cost them eight. Uh, the reason to sandbag the passage is I've bottomed a bunch of cards that I don't want to redraw. So like if I crack the passage, I know all of these cards are not Elspeth Conqueror's Death. So, like, I just want to get back to Elspeth conquering death. Pretty big mistake on the opponent's part here. They definitely should have waited with their murderous rider. They must have forgotten about my thing. This gives me an extra scry next turn, which is nice. Because it gives me an extra zombie. It would affect them. They would have to pay. Um, they would have to pay the extra mana. They have to pay two mana. I think I'm going to decline here because this is threatening to ultimate next turn, right? This only comes in on six. So this like can't even kill Calyx if they want to trade in altogether. And like, even if they kill Calyx, Conqueror's Death is going to bring him back again in a couple of turns. They could minus, yeah, okay, this is a good line. Let's say they can minus three and then give 
Calyx a love tap for one here. All right, so looking for another Conqueror's Death here. Have I mentioned that this is my favorite, one of my favorite cards in the set? Have I mentioned that this is one of my favorite cards in the set? What's the price for adding a modern deck to the queue? $100? Fuji has not gotten back to me. The pattern future appears before me. So like Calyx is ready to alt. This is ready to pop off. This brings this back. I think I like the more aggressive ones, Bank Weasel. As always, if you want my feedback on decks, you should check the wrap-up segments on them. So if you're at the very, very end, if you don't have time to watch the whole video, uh, there you always do a wrap-up segment at the end. Is it modern good now? No. The good modern format that I once loved playing is dead, and it's never coming back, chat. I wonder if you're brave enough. It's never coming back. Thank you for the three months of support. I appreciate that, Everett. I will hold your heroic dreams. They banned Opal like I wanted. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to me talk, I talked about how there needed to be an unbanning too. Modern still a crap show of decks that I find largely uninteresting. You can you can go back and watch us play the last modern deck that we played on YouTube and you'll see what the experience is. We won the first match and I kind of just sat there and was like, "Why are we here? Why are we playing? What are we doing with ourselves?" It's like one of the least interesting matches of Magic I've ever won. It's, it's okay to not like all the formats, really. If you if you enjoy getting Primeval Titaned, enjoy playing Modern. I personally am not a fan. Yeah, I think it was back Splinter Twin and Birthing Pod. I might dip back in for those because those cards are kind of novel. But without those cards... Yeah, Sand Screen. <laughs> okay, interested to see how this feels. Gosh, they put discard spells in their ramp deck. That's so good. So I like. Kind of have to just erasure. Take the erasure. I I agree with that completely. Fall not. Fall not dead. I like, I like the idea of what it was doing. The execution left a lot to be desired for me personally. Morning, Rage Quit. See if they play a Baby Crisis here. Or if they just like tap land pass. Galax is a good pickup. If we can get him going with some card advantage, it's potentially very good for us. Is Forest the new island? Yes. I guess the problem here is... 
when I Calyx, if they have an untapped land, they can kill my Calyx in combat. I think we just play this and hope that doesn't happen. I can't not use my mana this turn. I'll fall too far behind if I don't use my mana this turn. Yep. The good the good news is we get to have Elspeth conquer Nyssa. And then in a couple of turns we'll bring back it'll bring back Calyx. So that's nice. Got that going for us. Yeah, this might be a matchup that's tough without a sweeper effect, but our deck's kind of creature based, so I'm not sure that we can really afford to play a sweeper. We'll see. I added a couple of D Sparks to the sideboard explicitly for this match because I think D Sparks one of the better cards you can be playing here past Conqueror's Death. Yeah, Elspeth conquering Nissa is definitely not Wizard appro Wizard approved canon. Probably see Cavalier come down here. If that happens, we'll go. Birth, grab a Plains, Banishing Light, your Cavalier, play Godless Shrine, tap, pass. Really? Okay, that's interesting. Huh? Hey, Coffee Beer H2O. Thanks for the brand new Prime Support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hoglandia. You're having a wonderful day wherever you're at. All right, I think I still just get rid of this. We did win. We did beat the Grixis deck. Playing, playing against the bad guy now. Well, we're on track to run a little bit long today. Thanks to all almost 1,600 people who are here. If we get up above... God, I can just never beat Casualties of War, can we? If we get up above, like, 1,800 viewers, I think we're going to add a third and maybe a fourth standard deck to the set today. I am born of Nyx, child of the stars. Hey, Kingdom. Thanks for the two months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hey, you define an Archon ASAP. It's a card that can allow us to apply enough pressure to actually, like, kill them before they run away with the game with their go-over-the-top cards. The Soul-type matchup seems like it's probably harder for us than Simic, just because, like, Casualties of War is just such a huge beating. There goes our, our backup gas. They binned Brazen Borrower when I have a Banishing Light. I'm going to concede the match here, I think. And I don't, I don't know if this is really beatable. Yeah, they're about to cast uh, Casualties of Wars. I'm going to concede the match. Choice, thanks for 17 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I don't think this deck is playable if Sultai. Sultai is popular. Sultai hasn't been super popular. So we're going to keep playing this set today, but I don't think there's anything you can do to meaningfully make this deck good against Sultai. Sultai Ramp. Casualties. Casualties of War are just like, it like more than five for one to you. I think, I think we might have a shot against the Simic Ramp decks with the various tools we have, but... Casualties of War and their own discard spells, just. Well, the Hydroid Crisis was going to go to the bin, right? So Hydroid Crisis comes back as a 0 0, but yeah, they were going to get the Cavalier back. I 
guess I keep that. Maybe I'm supposed to bottom that and just like hope for a, a birth on the draw here or an Othakaya. Well, at least they're light up the stage half bricked, huh? So I won't be able to cast that next turn. We're going to take two down to 15. We'll shock down to 13, Banishing Light. This Archon, if they miss a land drop here, especially, this Archon might be able to stabilize us. Maybe I should have bottomed. Yeah, I think I, I think I messed up. I think I messed up my London Mulligan. I probably should have, I probably should have bottomed one of these shock lands and kept the kept the fabled passage because like i don't need a fourth white source i definitely could have bottomed a godless shrine and fetched a swamp with the fabled passage and be plus two life here yeah it depends like if they draw another removal spell the archon is not going to be good enough but in, in general the archon might drag us kicking and screaming across the finish line yeah So dead to second burn spell, dead to cleave. Okay, I think we're good to go here. No blocks. So unless this calls the dead is exceptionally unlucky and misses making a zombie, we have to hit a creature or an enchantment with this. Perfect. And I think I just hold tight for now. Like if I attack with the Archons of Sun's Grace, I lifelink for three, but attacking with the Archon gives them the green light to attack me with the Scorch Spitters. So I'm like gaining three, but taking four. So it's a bad exchange for me. Are we double blocking a four, four? No, probably not. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we are. Because, like, if they shock one of these, that, uh, that means I can block with the Archon of Sun's Grace better. And, it, like, it's a shock going at one of my creatures instead of going at my face. Yeah, I, think, I think this block is right. All right, if we don't die this turn, we should be in a great spot. And kind of, kind of hold it on, which is not bad. And remember, my mulligan decision that was bad this game, I could be plus two life here. Now, if I was plus two life, we definitely have more breathing room. That was a bad conqueror's death. It's the best play we had. If I do this, if I do this and they shock me, I take five altogether. They could shock plus this. I take six, but I'm gaining seven. I mean, if they, it's not even worth talking about cleave because if they have cleave, I'm dead. Blocking like this isn't great if they have any red instant or sorcery.
Yeah, okay, let's just do this. Hopefully it's just this. Whoo! Oh, that's a good draw. Conquer's death is going to bring back Kallax next turn, which will give us, uh, this deck is a good red matchup. Definitely feels like. Deadweight's great. Is Massacre Girl good enough here? I'm not sure that it is. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from the person that maintains the project, Lizardio. If I don't hear back from them early this week, I'm going to go through the process of putting up my own extension. So I'm going to give them give them a couple of days before I start doing doing work myself. But I have to figure out figure out the process to get my own Twitch extension updated. D Spark hit Ember Cleave, Torbrand, and Experimental Frenzy. All of which, so like, there aren't a ton of hits for it, but all the hits are super high impact. So I think it's worth bringing in, especially because it's instant speed and pretty cheap. Well, the seven spells here are really good. Unfortunately, we need some lands. They will sideboard the red card with protection from white. You think that's good against us? That doesn't seem particularly good here. Huh? Do I bottom Calyx here? Because this with dead weight and birth are both pretty good here, huh? Yeah, I think so. Really? They did bring it in? That's interesting. That card doesn't seem particularly good against us, but I'll take it. I guess, I guess it doesn't get exiled by Banishing Light. It doesn't get killed by Othakaya. Sure. It attacks through my lifelink dorks. Deadweight. Deadweight into this card's been real good. Pray wait. Thank you for the two-thirds of a year. I appreciate the continued support. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. It's like two mana. Get get four power across two bodies. Pretty decent. Huh? How greedy is it? To leave them Torbrand for a turn and just plan to Conqueror's Death it. That's probably super greedy, right? I get like cleaved and just, they just end my entire career. Hopefully this is Cleave here, and then we just get to Conqueror's Death. Yeah. So we take six total. What's up, Tiny Man? I wanna see you. You wanna see us? Ah! How's your Saturday going? Is it pretty good? Change the owl color. We should change the owl color? You know how this works. You're a master. I like him dark color, cat colors. You like him the dark colors? I kind of like him the dark colors, too. Because they match this green. They do, they do match better. You're right. 
They're matched because the four is the same cover that Atlas looks like. Let's keep doing like that. Hopefully we draw an untapped land tier so we can go Archon into birth. They don't have a guy. They don't have a guy, you're right. But we do. Do you know what we call people that don't have don't have animals? They're plebs. Plebs. They're plebs, yep. So when we're, we're only plebs if, if, if we don't have an animal. We'll... Correct. If we don't have an animal, we're a pleb. Well, when both of us don't have an animal, uh, uh, we're still... Both of us are plebs. Yeah, if nobody has animals, they're both plebs. You're pretty, pretty smart. Hey, where's the wolf? Why don't I have So, birth gets me the land, but I want to play birth after Sun's Grace, so that way I can make a Pegasus with it. So I could. I could. <laughs> Listen, chat. Listen, chat. There are free to play animals. There's a free to play animals. You can free to play and not be a pleb. There's free to play and not be a pleb. <laughs> All right, so we want this to find disfigure. I want this to find disfigure. <laughs> disfigure. Disfigure. <laughs> 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 All right, what's the play here? What's the play here? What is the play, Declan? Yeah. You don't know? What good are you? That won't let me you need a I think I just slam Archon. Yeah, I think slam Archon is correct. They're holding cards, so like they could have like another lava coil or something here. More man. That's that's my face. Yep. You're shaking. So we're going to three. Okay, let's go to three. Wow, woof. <laughs> hey, I love you. <laughs> well, that's the land we needed last turn. So we need a. If we draw a disfigure, we're not dead, right? Got three, four shots at it. Earth. Super, super close game. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I was just supposed to call the dead plus birth last turn. Maybe I was supposed to call the dead plus birth last turn. No, I was at one life, Reaper. This cost two, this cost four. So if I would have if I would have played around the lava coil, we'd have been in a much better spot there. And the fact that they had a bunch of cards left in their hand that they were sitting on probably should have played around Lava Coil. Uh, we had one dead weight on turn two. But yeah, zero. Oh, Othakaya would have saved us there too, right? Yeah. I think this matchup's quite good. I think we're pretty unfortunate to lose that. I also think on top of being unfortunate, I failed to read my opponent correctly and then gave them outs I didn't have to give them because I failed to read them correctly. Like I think, I think if I take the more conservative play and like not jam Archon there, Twitch chat said to jam Archon. So I'm gonna blame Twitch chat. But I think, think, think I had some agency there that I gave up. How does this deck do against Simic? It's probably a dumpster fire against Simic. That's super unfortunate. We like needed to, we really need to draw a white source and we've drawn running non-white. God, that, if that isn't peak magic, I don't know what is. If that, if that series right there isn't peak magic the gathering, I don't, I don't know what is. Just, just absolutely unreal. Just picture, picture perfect. I'm excited to draw another double white card next turn.
Okay. Oh, I should have left that in there because I have Conqueror's Death. Are you kidding me? Is this actually real life? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. They get to equip this for free, too. Yeah, so I punt to the second game. Maybe I'm supposed to mulligan this game. I don't know. White's the most common color in our mana base. So, like, the odds of hitting white are, like, pretty high. Yeah, should it should have built the three white sources. I don't know, I don't know why, oh, Destiny Spinner, I thought you said Spear of Destiny, God, just, I'm really glad we don't care about our ladder rank, this ladder, not, not caring about the ladder rank and getting to watch it jump up and down pretty randomly is like, it's such a bad system, yeah, I think Destiny Spinner in the main, you can hedge whatever you want, I don't play best of one, so I don't know what decks people play there, but good advice would be adjust the main deck to hedge whatever you want to beat. All right, let's play one more with this before we slide on into the Just Guy combo deck. So I found out, David, that this month doesn't matter. Apparently, a bunch of Magic players complained and Wizards decided that this month still doesn't qualify you for anything. And next next month is when it starts qualifying you for things. So we went, we went back to playing on the ladder because the rank just doesn't matter. No, the reason why there's big jumps like that, Great Scott, is because there's lots of players who have very similar MMRs. So small changes in MMR jump you ahead or behind lots of people. So like there's lots of people. So like, let's say there's like 80 people who have like 80 MMR. So when you go from 79 MMR to 81 MMR, you jump over a bunch of people. And obviously the ranges are a little bit more than that. So like, we don't know exactly what their internal numbering system looks like, but something something to that degree is what's happening. There's so many people that play on the ladder that have such similar rankings that they're all packed in real close and tight together. So this is likely a flash deck. So I assume we're just like not resolving another spell this game. How's this deck? It's been good. I like this deck. It's fun to play. It's real, real bad against the Simic decks. You got dumpstered by a Sultai ramp deck. This is probably not going to be particularly close. Maybe just post the jam Calyx there. I mean, I don't even know if Simic's still the best thing to be doing. Um, but it's definitely, like, good against decks like this. Like, I think there's a number of things in this format that are, like, fine against the Simic decks. But this just isn't on the list of those things. How could they resolve that system? Okay, listen, here's something I want to explain to you fundamentally. And it's very important because a lot of people on the internet seem to not get this. It is not my job as someone who plays Magic Arena to fix the problems that Magic Arena has. There's this really weird mindset among players that you can't criticize or critique something that you'd like or don't like well, unless you have a perfect solution to fix, to fix, to fix it. 
they don't pay me to fix Magic Arena and come up with systems for them. That's not that's not my job. My job as a player is to articulate and voice when there's a system that feels bad and discourages me from playing Magic the Gathering. So I don't know. Maybe there's not a better system, but maybe there is. All I know is they just lazily copy and pasted the ladder system that basically everybody else does without trying to innovate at all. It's, be it's because they are, MWLX. Players are bad at finding solutions because it's, it's not our job to find solutions. Feels like they have another counter spell in their hands here. And like I'm just not gonna be able to kill the snipe pack ambusher and it's just gonna run away with the game. Like I've got I've got removal spells for it, but my removal spells are kinda clunky. Sure, when you're when you're working for someone, it's your job to solve the problems that you identify. I don't work for Wizards of the Coast, though. Most people who play games don't work for the pe the people that make the games, so it's not it's not our job to fix their problems. I agree with you that when you're identifying problems for your employer, you should probably be bringing solutions with you. But that dynamic changes when it's an industry like this. Correct, Prime. I'm aware that you can't win. That's why I don't go through the extra effort. I think it's also important to explain that, like, that's not your job to do. Just let Reddit fix your game. <laughs> yep. I'll get it. I'll get it all worked out. Lickety split for you. Uh, yeah, this hand's pretty good. It's got, uh, this is actually probably one of our best starts in this matchup. If we get to do this on two, and if we get really fortunate, if this hits a thing that this can exile and this can exile, we can have a lot of pressure very quickly here, which is key to beating the flash decks. Oh, am I just supposed to resolve that? Eh, I'm gonna do this. Let's just kill him. Hey, Hellboy. Thanks for the 24 months. The problem with, like, taking my turn to play this is they could just brazen borrower me and then I don't, don't accomplish anything. So like I could I could make the play that maybe lets other things resolve later and then they still just don't resolve later. Hey Rumple Smith, thanks for the four months. I appreciate the third of a year. Welcome back. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are. What problem do we have that's solved by that, Jack Frost? So to give you specifics. The only problem matchup I've really felt like I have with this deck so far are the Simic decks. I feel like I have a lot of play everywhere else, and I don't understand how rebuying my enchantments solves the problem that those decks just run me down. Like generating generating little bits of value isn't isn't going to solve how they how they beat me. Again, you want to like, when you're looking at decks like this and trying to figure them out, you want to say, my deck has this problem and these cards might address this problem in this way. So that gets countered, but I get to turn into a zombie friend here, which is not bad. Oh, it only does enchantments. I'm silly. I thought this was creatures. It's only enchantments. Black, white, doom. Maybe. Did you see the Mardu doom deck that we played, Gorks? 
It was basically black white doom splashing for croc so we could actually kill people. I feel like I'd be surprised if, and the splash is like relatively free. Can I ask the appeal of this deck over green white? This deck's more controlling. The green white deck we played the other day was more of a, the green white deck we played the other day was more of an aggro deck. This is more of a mid range slash control deck. I think, I think a lot of the times what you're doing, you're just like looking at the fact that both the decks play some Calyx and you're like drawing the conclusion that they should be, they should be the same deck when really that's not how it works. Too, too often people uh, try to draw parallels between things that shouldn't have parallels drawn. They're like, oh, this card overlaps. So these decks must be doing fundamentally the same thing when a lot of the time they're just not. Maybe there should just be a bunch of Destiny Spinners in the sideboard, because I do think this matchup is pretty hard. So they have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine mana here. If they crisis us, we're probably pretty dead. Draws like four cards for them. Yeah, I don't think I'm interested in playing Esper Doom, Mikey. I rejected the last couple of Doom decks people sent in. I just don't think that archetype's very good. I don't think it's very good. I don't think it's particularly interesting. Yeah, we've been bumping between 16 and 1700. We'll see where we see where we end up at after the Just Guy deck. <sighs> Feels magic, man. We scried we scried two non-lands at the bottom, right? Yeah. Oh, we're we're a thousand percent about to mill three lands. It's gonna be okay. Sick. Only two lands. Good beats. <laughs> Their hand just a bunch of bricks. Nah, Destiny Spinner wouldn't be very good as a 3-drop. The purpose of Spinner is to be able to get down under Counter Magic. So, Floating Mana here implies they drew Crisis, which probably means we're dead. It's going to be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 mana. I'm going to concede to a Crisis here. Yeah, they could have a bunch of Counter Magic. That's true. No, we just can't beat a 13-13 command. Elspeth conquers death, can't exile Krasis. Krasis converted mana cost on the board is two. So if they have a Krasis, we can't win the game. That's true. We do need an untapped land specifically. Now, if they have Brazen Bar we're here, they could bounce us plus, plus counter our spell. Well, we're gonna get to gain five and scry five. Our zomboys and girls here. Protect that, which 
If they attack with a bunch of Nissalans here, I'm going to double block two of them. Yeah, yeah, this matchup's hard enough that there should probably just be, like, max Destiny Spinners in the board. The zombies don't drain nifty, they just gain life. This card this card is great. This card is the reason why I enjoy playing this deck for sure. It's very, very good. Could I have killed them with spinner? And yeah, they might have been dead if I used the spinner. Spinner would have made a 4-4. They could have blocked two. Was Paradise Druid untapped? I don't remember if Paradise Druid was untapped. One zombie definitely had sickness. Yeah, Spinner. Spinner has an activated ability. Makes a land a creature with power and toughness equal to the number of enchantments you control till end of turn. Just like pretty great. Our deck needs four spinner. It might, honestly. If you if you care about this matchup, you should definitely play four spinner. I don't know if I care about this matchup, though. The other the other question is. Do, does enough happen in, does Spinner swing this matchup enough to be worth the sideboard slots? I don't know that Spinner in the main is that good. There aren't that many counter spells around right now. And like, it's just a 2-3. Nightmare. Shepard's been just okay. Maybe that card could be Destiny Spinner in the main. I don't know. Destiny Destiny Spinner's not awful against aggro. Because it is a 2-3 for 2. Good anti- Good anti-aggro is a stretch. Playable, playable is true. So, like, one thing I think enough players don't do enough of the time is consider when they shouldn't try to fix a bad matchup. I think too often players spend too many slots in their sideboard trying to take a 30% matchup to a, to a 50% matchup or a 45% matchup. But, like, if you're 25% if you're to win a match game one and you pull that matchup post-sideboard to 50% in the post-board games, you're still very likely to lose that match most of the time, right? Huh? I Google it, Anoronk. Google the details around the latter seasons. So the borrowers also kind of awkward for us here because it just gets to bounce the sun's grace. Maybe I lead on a calls the dead here as like, hey, look, a distraction. So the flash deck typically plays love struck in their sideboard. So that way they can have a better chance against aggro decks that would try and get under them. Is, is why they do it. So they can borrow this token if they'd like and crack us for seven. I agree, Percy. I 
I think if we kick Nissa in the teeth, this format would be really, really good. Oh, second beastly. <clears throat> I really just can't do anything here, right? No matter what I do, I end up in a really bad spot. The Brazen Borrower is just too brutal. <sighs> Maybe I was supposed to take the Borrower with the Agonizing Remorse. I don't know. So, like, they can bounce the Archon, attack me with everything. I trade with Paradise Druid. I eat a 1-1. I take 11, I go to 1, I gain 1 with Calls the Dead next turn. I really want to draw a 2-mana enchantment so I can 2nd Archon plus play a 2-mana enchantment next turn. That would let us stabilize this game, but I, I don't have that many 2-mana enchantments is the issue. So they drew a spell because Growth Spiral just happened right away. I don't know, I think... Yeah, so like there's a couple different things I could do here. The Brazen Barber complicates everything. If I slam Conqueror's Death, they bounce Archon in response. And then I have to chump block the other Love Struck Beast. I don't, I could trade with Paradise Druid. If I play the other Archon out, they bounce one. I chump block, I go to three, I still have an Archon in play. And then if I draw a land next turn, I could Archon plus Calls the Dead. I feel like the play to win line might actually be play the second Archon. It's not worth thinking about a counter spell because if they have a counter spell, I'm just dead, it doesn't matter. So don't, don't even worry about the random card. Pretend the random card is useless because I can't beat another spell. This didn't matter. Yep. I don't think uh, I don't think you can make these matchups meaningfully better. I think the type of deck that we're playing is what I would classify as a traditional mid-range deck and decks like what that opponent is playing and like what the Sultai Ramp deck we were playing, uh, the pro opponent, couple opponents previous was playing are decks that took traditional mid-range decks like this and made them largely unplayable last season. And I don't think there's tools that we have that can fix those problems. I think sometimes you're gonna be able to steal. I think if you put four Destiny Spinners in your sideboard, maybe you can steal games on occasion, but I think you're still gonna win more than you lose. So I or lose more than you win, so I probably wouldn't play a ton of copies of this. I don't know. Maybe you don't need Massacre Girl. Maybe this is unnecessary and you just do this. I don't know that I've really loved Massacre Girl in any matchups that we've played so far, so maybe that's a fine exchange. Could see that being okay. I guess I guess we'll do that. The Flash, the Flash matchup might be something you could drag closer to 50%, but like, as far as the casualties of war decks go, they're just gonna destroy you. Like, casualties of war, just like, six for ones you in most games, and you just gotta like, smile and get hit. All right, I'm gonna update, update the list on the website with that. I do enjoy this deck. I think it's red matchups, it's various aggro matchups are very reasonable. I think it has a lot of play in all of the matchups that aren't Simic. And so far this latter season, until we know and have a couple of competitive tournaments, 
This deck could end up being fine. There are other decks that aren't this that feel competitive against Simic and Sultai. And if those other non-Simic and Sultai decks keep Simic and Sultai from being half the format, if you're just punting or hoping to get lucky in, you know, a quarter of your matches or a tenth of your matches, that's an acceptable ratio. All right, what are we doing? We're going to roll on into at least one more deck here. We're going to play another kind of sweet combo deck here. So we've got a three-card infinite combo with Biomancer, Heliod Suncrown, and Glinthorn Buccaneer that I'll explain when we get back. I'm going to hit a quick ad roll while we get set up for this next one. Back in just a few, folks. Thanks for hanging out today.